is risen indeed. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave his life on Calvary, was buried, and rose again on the third day. I read in the Gospel of Matthew where it tells us that even his enemies remembered what he had said. Even when they were thinking about what to do, how to keep the message of Jesus from being spread, being shared. They said, we remember how that he said in three days, after three days, I will rise. Even those who were the enemies of Christ had heard those words and yet his disciples struggled with that message. Let us not struggle. Let us know that Jesus himself has risen from the dead, that He is alive, and that He is alive forevermore. We are so glad to have you worship with us this morning. We pray that this service might be honoring to Him and might be a strength and an encouragement to each and every one who is here. One of our traditions here at Open Door Church is that we receive an offering for the glory of God at this time to help plant new churches in our country. So those who were here last week received a little envelope that you can put the offering in, but uh, I'll ask the ushers if they can have a plate at the back. If you wish to participate in this, that's what that offering goes to. Any check can be made out to Open Door Church. But we do this because we know that the greatest way to tell the message of Jesus is to start new churches, even as this church is starting. So pray with us now as we give this day to our God our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you bow with me, please? Dear Lord, not one of us is worthy of what you did for us. We thank you that we didn't have to be. We thank you that you paid the price so that we could be acceptable we might be able to be received by you, that we may have that future there in the glory of heaven. I pray for the people that are here today and just pray that each one of them might know without a shadow of a doubt that dear Lord Jesus, you are alive, that you have risen. And as we celebrate that each of us might or just rejoice in the fact that we serve a risen Savior. Lord, bless us now. Help us, dear God, that this might not be just a day that we go through the motions, but a day that we truly worship. Bless Chip and Jan and Lisa as they lead us. Bless each of us as we enter into this service wholeheartedly desiring to receive a word from you for our own hearts and our own walk and our own struggles, that we may be strengthened and indeed we will know, dear Jesus, that you are risen. brought something with me, or somebody brought them to me. Maybe you know what these are. What are these? They're what? Easter eggs. They're Easter eggs, that's right. They're Easter eggs. You made that one? Who made this one? You made that one? Okay. Do you guys, are Easter eggs fun? What do you think? Are they fun? Why are they so much fun? Somebody tell me, what is fun about Easter eggs? You get to what? Hide them. We get to hide them, that's right. And we get to dye them. You get to dye them. What else do you get to do with Easter eggs? Uh, you get the candy inside them. So they're <laughs> plastic ones. Yeah, the plastic ones have candy. That must be your favorite ones. Okay, what else do you get to do to them? You get to dye them. You get to hide them. What else do you get to do? Get Who knows? Who knows? Lee, do you know? get to find them. That's right. What else? Color them. Color them. 
<laughs> you get to eat them. Yeah, you got to make sure you find them quickly if you're going to eat them. That is right. Okay, so Easter eggs are fun. But what if you, if somebody had an Easter egg hunt and you went out to have an Easter egg hunt, but you couldn't find any Easter eggs? Would you be happy? No. Huh? Would you be happy if you couldn't find any Easter eggs? No. No, you'd be what? You'd be sad. You'd be angry. <laughs> sad, angry. If you didn't find the Easter eggs, because that's what you're there to do. You're there looking for them and everybody else, maybe everybody else is finding what they want to find, but you can't find what you're looking for. You'd be kind of sad, wouldn't you? Well, just think about this. After Jesus died on the cross and He was buried, you remember Mary went to the tomb? And she, who was she looking for? What was she looking for? Jesus. Do you know what she was looking for? Jesus. She was looking for Jesus, but she thought something. She, what did she think about Jesus? That he was stolen. Yeah, she thought that he was stolen because she didn't know he was what? Alive. What? Alive. She didn't know he was? Alive. That's right. He was what? That's right, he's alive. That's right. She didn't know that he was alive. So she came and looked for him. And when she found that that tomb was empty, was she happy? Yes. No, she wasn't happy because she thought somebody had taken the body. And so she was really sad. sad. And she cried, didn't she? She cried. But it wasn't long until Jesus was standing there talking to her. And then she wasn't sad any longer, was she? She was what? Happy. She was happy. very happy. She was very, very happy because Jesus is not dead. He is alive. alive. That's right. He is. So always remember that. And remember that on this special day, and in fact every Sunday, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. That He's no longer in the grave. He's no longer in that tomb. But He is alive. And I'm sure you're going to be talking about that in your time with your teachers this morning. So let's pray so you can get there. And I know you're going to have a lot of fun. So let's pray. Father, thank You that You love us, that You care for us. Thank You that You've given us such a marvelous opportunity today to learn about You and to just celebrate what you've done for us. Bless the children now as they go to their classes. Bless the teachers as they teach them. Let it be a time of joy and, and celebration in each of their lives. For we give you praise and thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys can go. earlier that uh, we have a tradition as far as giving at the time of Easter. Uh, we started a new tradition this morning and uh, some of you weren't able to be there. I know you missed it. I know you'd like to have been there. I thought we'd show you a couple of slides of our first, very first worship service there at our new property. Scripture and singing and sharing of the good message, the, the special message of our Lord and His resurrection. Now, it's a very positive thing for us to gather together and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. It's a wonderful thing. It's a glorious thing for us to be able to do that. But I'm going to risk this morning being a little bit negative, but I'll be negative in a positive way, okay? Because I want to speak to you about some resurrection day don'ts. Now, if you look at that in the in the bulletin, you look look at that. One of our folks, when they came in this morning, thought that that said Resurrection Day Donuts, okay? But this is res not Resurrection Day Donuts. This is Resurrection Day Dumps. 
And so, we know that we're here to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever had somebody to approach you about doing something special for you on a special day in your life? Something they wanted to do for you, but you had just assumed that they had not done that. Well, I'm going to be speaking to you this morning about some things that the Lord does not want you to do on this special day when Christians celebrate our Lord's resurrection from the grave. I know that you want to celebrate His resurrection in the right way, so if you have your Bibles, open your Bible to John chapter 20. 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. Those uh, scriptures are also there in the bulletin that you received on the way in. So let's look at this. Let's see what God has to say to us today. And I want to share with you the first of those Resurrection Day don'ts. Well, the first thing that I want to say to you is on this day, don't forget to look for Jesus. Now, there's a lot of people, they look for, they look for Easter eggs but they're not looking for Jesus. Notice what it says in verse 1. It says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark. Now you may have spent the morning this morning looking for one thing and then for another. Some people this morning got up and they looked on the internet to try to find a church that they could go to, that they could attend. Some people look to find something that they felt was appropriate to wear or maybe they knew what they wanted to wear but they needed to find that very special thing to wear with it. So people are always searching for these things. But how many of us woke up this morning looking for Jesus? Looking for Jesus. Now that's what Mary Magdalene did. She woke up and she went immediately to the tomb where she knew His body had been laid. Her first thoughts, her first thoughts were of the precious Lord. Her first thoughts were of Jesus. Now, we look at her and we see that she didn't understand all that He said, and especially this most important thing that, she, that He said, but she still went looking for Jesus. So when you walked into this auditorium this morning, what were you looking for? Whatever it was, you may not find it here, unless you are looking for Jesus. Now, if you're looking for Him, I want you to know He's here because He promised us that where two or three are gathered together in His name, there He is in the midst of them. In fact, I looked at the picture to see how many people showed up for the sunrise service. After all, I had to eat two breakfasts this morning. I had to get up and eat a little bit to get me through the first, to get me through the sunrise service, and then go home and really eat so that I could so that I could uh, get my nourishment to go through the day. But I, I wanted to see how many people came and were there for the sunrise service. So I counted 29, and I said, "That's good. One more, and we would have had as many years, as many people as there were years that Jesus ministered on the earth." And then I thought, well, we had 30 there because Jesus promised to be with us wherever we are, so maybe we ought to count Him as well. Well, if you're looking for Him this morning, you will find Him right here. You will find Him in the pages of His Word. You know where else you'll find Him? You will find Him in the lives of people who love Him and have come here to worship with other believers. That's where you find the Lord Jesus. You know where you find Him? You find Him in the songs we sing. You find Him in the songs. You know where else you find Him? You find Him in the prayers we pray. You see, it's everything is all about Jesus, not just today, but every day and always. So if you came looking for Jesus, you should not go away disappointed this morning. Whatever it was you were looking for, if you came looking for Jesus, I believe that you will find Him. And yet, in spite of the fact that Mary came looking for Jesus, she is both disappointed and very distressed because she did not find Him when she came looking for Him. Why is that? Well, you know why. Because she was looking for Him in the wrong place. 
And so what do we find? We understand that one of our Resurrection Day don'ts is don't look for Jesus among the dead. Don't look for Him among the dead. Listen to it again. It says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. And so she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, talking about John himself, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. She went there to that place where you'd look for someone who is dead. And our Lord Jesus was not there. One of the strange things, I guess, some people would think is strange, that Martha and I love to walk through cemeteries. I like them because they're very quiet. I like them because they're very peaceful. And often, if you read the headstones, you will find testimonies of faith that are written there on those headstones. I've often been to cemeteries where I was looking for the graves of my ancestors, of, of my uh, grandparents, my great-grandparents, to be able to be there and to think about them at that time. And sometimes I look to see if there's anything on their headstone that would indicate their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. At the first church I pastored, I pastored in Louisiana, and we lived next door to the church. And the cemetery was on the other side of the church. And so all we had to do was walk across the, uh, the yard of the church and walk across the uh, not-so-busy road that was there running beside the church and walk over into the cemetery, and we could be there, visit those folks to our heart's content. And so we visited those graves Often. Now, in the world's eyes, none of those people that we were looking for were important. But I knew that they were every one important in God's eyes. I've also visited the graves of people who are well known. Everyone's heard of King Tut. Well, I want you to know I traveled to Egypt and I visited his tomb. But I've never visited a burial place that was more important than the place that I visited in Jerusalem. And I visited that garden tomb and that place, which was most likely, in all likelihood, it was the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know how I found it? I found that tomb open and I found that tomb empty just as you would expect it to be. What a glorious thing. You see, I went there looking for His tomb. I didn't go there looking for Him because I knew that my Lord Jesus, He is risen. Now Mary Magdalene, on the other hand, expected that very tomb to be occupied. And she was greatly disturbed when she did not find the body of Jesus there. Well, let me give you some advice. Don't look for Jesus among the dead. He is not still on the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ was taken down from the cross. He was buried and He is alive. He is risen. There's an old hymn and it says this, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. Do you remember the hymn? He lives within my heart. There is the greatest proof. There is that which we know. The Lord Jesus Christ, if you've opened your heart up to the Lord Jesus, if you've asked Him to come in and be your Lord and Savior, if you've surrendered your life to Him, then He is there. He lives within our heart. Listen to how Jesus describes Himself in Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. John writes and says this, He says, When I saw Him, talking about Jesus, I fell at His feet like a dead man. And He placed His right hand on me, saying... Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. Did you hear that? The living one. He says, and I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and of Hades. So let me say to you this morning, don't look for Jesus 
among the dead because he is alive. Our third don't is this. Don't weep for Jesus. Don't weep for Jesus. Notice what it says beginning in verse 11. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been lying. Now we know that Mary was greatly disturbed because if you look somewhere and you see these two angels there, I would imagine you'd take note of that. That would be something that would shock you out of, out of whatever funk you were in. You would be shocked because you would see two glorious angels there, but she is so much in grief that she doesn't even recognize what is going on at that moment. Mary's shock has given way to loud, unrestrained weeping. Now, in the previous verses that we did not read, she had told the disciples of the open tomb. Peter and John ran to see what she was talking about, but they left without any answers. But she couldn't leave. All she could do was weep. So why was Mary weeping at the tomb? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because she didn't know any better. She didn't know any better. She didn't know any better than to think that his body had been taken away and hidden. She didn't know any better than to think that Jesus was still dead. She didn't know any better than to think that a very bad situation had just gotten worse. When his body was taken down from the cross and he was laid in the tomb, it was the beginning of the Sabbath day, and the women could not come and anoint the body of Jesus for burial. He was buried hurriedly, and they were waiting until it was the time that they could go once again to the tomb, and they could anoint the body of Jesus. And so, they desired to do that. But here she thought, even that we cannot do. Even that last act of ministering to our Lord, we cannot do. You see, she wept because she didn't know any better. But you know better. You know better. You see, you know better if you have a personal relationship with Jesus. Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You see what is central to that? You've got to confess Him as Lord and believe that He is raised from the dead. We do not serve, we do not have a Savior if He is a dead Savior. We have a living Savior. He's defeated death. He's defeated sin. He has defeated Satan. Now Mary's so consumed with grief that when she looked in that tomb and she saw those angels dressed in white, she didn't even realize who they were. You see, the angels were seated as though they were waiting for Mary. And I believe that they were. They sat quietly. They sat peacefully in a place that she thought of as a place of death. But you see, Jesus had transformed that place of death into a place which testified to life. The linen cloths that had bound him were stacked neatly where the body had been. But you see, there was no sign of him. Why? Because he had risen. Look at verse 13. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Let me say it to you again. Don't weep for Jesus. Mary was weeping because His body was not there. But think about it. If His body had been there, we would all have cause to weep because we would have no Savior. Why does she weep? All that she saw should have called to her mind that Jesus had said that on the third day that He would rise again. There was the empty tomb. There were the angels. There were the linen cloths. All of that should have reminded Mary of the promise of Jesus. Verse 14, look at it. When she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. 
But notice what else it says. And did not know that it was Jesus. You see, she hadn't expected him to be alive. She expected him to be dead. And so through her tears, when she looked at him, she didn't recognize him as her Lord. You look at that verse and you say, well, why did she turn around at that point? Well, maybe it's because she sensed the presence of another person, as we sometimes do, even when we've not heard anyone approach, we still sense that a person, another person is there with us. Maybe it was because the angels who were talking with her looked past her and looked at Jesus and she could tell by their gaze that, Jesus, that someone was there. And so she turned, and when she turned, there was Jesus. But why did she not know Him immediately? Well, as I said, her eyes were filled with tears. They were so full of tears, and her heart so full of grief, that she had not even known she was talking to angels. How could she realize, how could she recognize that she was looking at Jesus, who was alive, not a dead Jesus, but a risen Savior? Look at verse 15. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And then it says, supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus, you see, repeats the question of the angels. Woman, why are you weeping? But he adds another question. Notice what he says. He doesn't say, what are you seeking? Do you see what he says? He says, whom are you seeking? You see, she would never find the dead body of the Lord that she expected to find. But if she would open her mind and open her heart, she would behold before her the resurrected Lord. Verse 16 says that Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. You see, he simply called her name and she recognized him. His voice calling her name, stunned her out of her sorrow. And with open eyes, she realized that the one that she was speaking to was the one that she was certainly searching for, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, she recognized Him now immediately after He calls her by her name. So I would say to you this morning, don't weep for Jesus. I believe it is important for us. We cannot celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ without first recognizing that He paid the price for us on the cross. I think it is very important that we come during this season to understand that. That's the reason in the songs that we have sung this morning, they not only focus on the empty tomb, they also focus on the cross on which He died in order that we might realize the great victory that was won when Jesus came forth out of that grave in victory over death. It's important that we do that. But let us, even as we are humbled, even as we look at the cross, and even if tears come to our eyes, there are some movies that have been made about the crucifixion that I can hardly bear to watch them as they beat Him, as they nail Him to the cross, as He is hanging there in shame and in agony. I can barely stand to watch them. But I want to tell you something. What a joy fills my heart when I realize that He came down, He was taken down from that cross and He came out of that grave, that He is risen. There's another thing I want to share with you and that is another don't, and that is don't cling to Jesus. Listen to what it says in verse 17. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to Me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Now, as Mary recognizes Jesus, her first impulse is to grab hold of Him and never turn Him loose. Would you have been the same way? I would hope that you would have been. The verb that is translated clinging means to grasp tightly. Put your arms tightly around someone. She doesn't understand how He could be alive. 
But folks, understanding had nothing to do with it right then. He is alive, and that is all that matters. The New American Standard is correct when it translates this. Stop clinging to me. For the verb form is one which prohibits an action that has already begun. If you're familiar with the King James Version, that has caused some people to misunderstand that because the King James Version says, Touch me not. For I have not ascended to my Father. And some have erroneously taught that somehow Mary, by touching Him, would defile Him before He was able to present Himself to the Father. That is not in this passage at all. He is simply saying, do not cling to Me. Jesus was telling Mary, first of all, that she didn't need to cling to Him because He was going to stay for a while. Jesus is going to be there for a while. She's going to be able to fellowship with Him for a time. He was there those 40 days with His disciples and Mary certainly being among them. He is also saying that she should not cling to Him for He was soon going to ascend to the Father and be again removed from her sight. Now there are people that think that they have to have some type of image of Christ in order to feel close to Him. No, Jesus said don't cling to my image, don't cling to my body, don't cling to me. What Jesus tells us to do is by faith to see Him, by faith to reach out to Him, by faith to trust Him. It's a matter of the heart. It's not a matter of the eyes, but a matter of the heart. What is the truth for us this Resurrection Sunday? We are not to cling to the physical Jesus, but we are to rejoice in the risen Christ. The truth is that your relationship with Christ depends upon nothing physical to which you can cling. It depends upon a personal relationship that is initiated in an act of simple faith as you place your hope and place your trust in the One who died on the cross and rose from the grave. Putting your faith in His sacrificial death and His victorious resurrection. You see, some cling to Him through an emotional attachment, thinking that because they are moved emotionally by His death and feel a fondness for Him, that that means that they're saved. Well, I want to tell you, I was emotionally attached to Jesus and I had a fondness for Him before I ever trusted Him as Savior. I appreciated Him. I appreciated what He did for me. But there came a time when I had to realize that it was more than that, that I was a sinner. He died on the cross to pay for my sins. And what I had to do in order to be in right relationship with God was not just be warm and fuzzy about my relationship with Jesus. But it was to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I did that, Oh, my affection for Him certainly deepened. My appreciation of Him grew enormously. But I saw Him as my risen Savior, the one who is at the very right hand of the Father, the one who even intercedes for us. It's not about an emotional attachment. Our salvation, our relationship with God has very little to do with emotion and very much to do with an act of the will as you, ex as you choose to accept His death as payment for your sins and you choose to trust Him as the risen Lord, the one who has come forth in victory over the grave. And so don't cling to the physical Jesus, but instead, what are you to do? You're to trust in the risen Christ. There's one last don't. Don't stay quiet about Jesus. Okay? Don't stay quiet about Jesus. Listen to what it says. Begin in verse 17. Jesus tells her, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Now there is no time of the year when it is more socially acceptable for you to attend church than on Easter Sunday. It may have been unthinkable to you that you would do anything else than to be in church somewhere this morning. But let me say to you what you already know, and that is, if it is as far as it goes, if that is all your relationship with God is, is showing up every now and then, all you're doing is tipping your hat to Him, the, the one who gave His life on Calvary, the one who suffered for your sin, suffered the agony of the crucifixion for you. If that's all it is, there's no depth to it, there's no reality to it. 
It is about putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. I am not simply talking about deciding to go to church more. I am talking to you about choosing to take a stand for Jesus and live every day in love with your Savior. Live every day committed to Him. Make your decisions, every decision, in light of who He is, what He has done for you, and what He would want you to do for Him. Attending church will make you more religious maybe than you are, but you can be thoroughly religious, attend church every day, and pray three times a day, and one day you'll stand before the Lord and you will hear Him say, Depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. You see, people struggle with that, don't have an understanding of that. Every person needs to receive, must receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Every person must commit his or her life to Jesus, must accept Him, and by accepting Him, accept the gift of eternal life. Setting aside all hope they have in themselves and putting their hope totally and completely in Jesus. And so what does he say to Mary? He said, don't stay quiet. And we are not to stay quiet about Jesus. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came. What she do? She came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And that he had said these things to her. You see, Mary did as Jesus told her to do. She shared the good news that the Lord Jesus is alive. She shared about her personal encounter with Him and she did not worry about what others might think about what she said. She said this to His disciples when the disciples looked at her and said, hmm, one of those emotional women. We better check this out for ourselves. She didn't worry about whether anybody might believe her or not. She didn't argue that somebody else could share the message better than what she could. She simply did what Jesus told her to do. So be done with the excuses. If you love the Lord Jesus, tell people. If you believe that He's risen, tell people. Please remember these Resurrection Day don'ts. Before I... Finish. Let me share with you just a few, and I'll do it quickly, some Resurrection Day do's. Do leave here knowing whether you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I would hope that every person here could leave here saying, I know with absolute certainty that I put my faith and trust in the risen Christ. I know with absolute certainty I'm not trusting in religion. I'm not trusting in my good works. I'm not trusting in anything that I have done. But this morning, I know that I have surrendered my life to Jesus. He is my Lord and my Savior. If you don't have that certainty, you need to do business with God. That's certainly a resurrection day do because you don't have any promise of tomorrow. You need to get your life settled, get things settled with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because not to do so is to spend an eternity in separation from Him. The second thing that I would say that you need to do is do take a stand for Jesus. If you've trusted Him, the, you know what the New Testament believers did? If they, as they trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what they did? They were baptized. After they trusted Jesus, they followed Him in believers' baptism. What a marvelous testimony that is of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a testimony of faith. I would say to you, do identify with a body of believers. Be with people who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Be a part of that body. Be a part of that people so that we can minister to one another. So that we can glorify the Lord together. And it all comes down to this. Do this. Do yield to God's will his will is that you be saved, that you be forgiven of sin. His will is that you not be ashamed of Him, but that you declare it through baptism, you declare it through, through identification with a local body of believers, that you declare it every day of your life by saying, I love the Lord Jesus. Not to be ashamed of Him, but that everybody might know that you belong to Him. So this morning, I'll say to you what we say all the time, and that is do whatever the Holy Spirit of God stirs your heart to do before you leave this place today. Because the Bible says today is the day of salvation.
Today is the point of decision. Now is the time to get it settled with God. Thank you for being here. Honoring Christ. It's, it's an honor to come uh, and to be present as we talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, an, it's honoring to Him. But now, if He's spoken to your heart, you honor Him by doing what He wants you to do, by responding to Him. So I'm going to ask that you bow your heads, close your eyes for just a moment. On this Resurrection Sunday, You have been brought face to face once again with the truth that Jesus Christ has paid for your sins and that He is risen, that He is the living Lord. Is He Lord of your life? First, have you trusted Him as Lord and Savior? Have you committed your, committed your life to Him? Do you have that promise of the gift of eternal life? Having responded to Him. If not, you can get that settled right now. It's not about anything else. It's about you and your relationship with Christ. It is a personal matter. You can say, Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you are the Son of God, the eternal Son of God. And that though you never sinned, you paid the price for my sins dying on that cross so that I might be forgiven. Lord Jesus, I believe that you rose from the grave in victory over death, in victory over sin, in victory over Satan. I believe that. And I ask you to take control of my life, to be my Lord, my Master. Lord, I accept that gift of eternal life, even now. Maybe there's another decision you need to make. God's spoken to your heart in some way this morning. As we wait just a moment longer, you do business with God, do what He would have you to do. I would encourage you, if there's any way that I can help you or that one of these other members of this church, somebody here that maybe you trust, They'd be willing to talk with you about their relationship with Christ and about yours. Don't leave hopeless. Leave with that certainty about your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for the privilege that is ours together here. Lord, I thank you for each and every person who is here. What an encouragement it is to me to see them. And Lord, I believe that they have come to honor you. And Lord, I pray that you would draw us to yourself even at this moment. Draw us closer to you. And Lord, if there's something that's lacking in our relationship with you, whichever one of us that might be, I pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit might Speak to that heart that they might know the joy and the peace of knowing you personally. We give you praise for all you've done. We pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Let me share just a couple of things with you before you go on this day. That is, that bulletin that you received mentions a members meeting. That is happening on Thursday evening. I am not certain of the location of that yet. I will be sending out an email. If it comes to Wednesday and you haven't heard from me, call me and I'll tell you where we are meeting because uh, we need to hear a report from our uh, construction committee. For one, you're wondering what in the world they've been doing. Uh, they're they're going to come and update you and share with you what they've been doing. And probably there will be some other things that we'll talk about with the property 
uh, that is that we have purchased and that uh, my prayer is that next Easter we'll be there, not here or somewhere else, we'll be there, that the building will be built and, and we'll be able to worship there at that site. So that's my prayer. Next year, there. Also notice that there's a membership class that's taking place tomorrow night and Tuesday night. doesn't mean you have to be desired to be a member to come to that. That will give you a lot of information about the church. So if you're just curious, you're welcome to come there. That is at my house. That is 35 Richmond Avenue here in Lee. And so if you haven't participated in that class and would be interested in doing so, come. And uh, we would be glad to have you to do that. And so there's other announcements in the bulletin. I can't remember exactly what they are. Again, um, if you want to give to the Easter offering, do so. That is just, all that money will go to help start churches. And part of the funding for this church from its very beginning has come because other churches have given to this very offering. And that's why the funds have been available. Some of the funds that we've received have come from that source. And we don't want to just be receivers. We want to be givers. And my prayer is that this church might be a church that never just thinks about itself, but always thinks about the world, always thinks about other people that are in need. So God bless you. Be focused on Him because He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's the other response? Amen. 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 What's the other response? He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. So, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Encourage one another as you go from this place. God bless you on this very special day. Thank you.